Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is the final episode in this series on using Dark Table on the Mac, just general general use stuff, nothing specific. This is still version 2.0.4. My name is Leander, and if you haven't seen the first two, I highly recommend checking those out. Um, that will help you on this. Today, we are just going to go over how to actually get your finished product out of Darktable and into JPEGs or that you can or whatever that you can share on the web or print or whatever you want to do, send to like a, a printer like White House Custom Color or something. Um, uh, just, just a general how to take your pictures and get them out to where you can share them. First things first, we're in the light table module. We want to select all of the photos that we want to export. So you can do that by hitting select all or use control A as your shortcut key. Um, the next thing you want to do is come down and make sure your metadata is okay. Um, make sure all your tags are there. If you tagged it, if you watched in the first part, we tagged it, and that looks good. I like to add a title. Uh, that way, in case we ever upload to a web service like Flickr, it has one. Uh, headshots in 2016 for a description. Nikon D800. Um, one off camera. Camera S. The 910 I think I used, and um, and edits in dark table. All right. After you do that, make sure you click apply, um, and it'll apply that metadata to all the images. And so now you can click around and see that they all have it. All right, all seven of them. Um, next options down here, you want to look at the export selected little thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that and give you a little bit of a better look at it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is look at the file on disk option. So in the storage options, you've got uh, several different things. I'm mainly going to show you these two, file on disk and Flickr web album. I've never used email, gallery, um, LaTeX, book templates. You can do that or Facebook web album. I don't really use those. I just use these two. First things first, though. Um, but if you export, quick note, if you export to a file on disk, you can then take that file and upload it pretty much anywhere. So... Um, that's kind of the master one, in my opinion. First things first, you want to tell it where to uh, export it to. So we'll click this little folder button here. And we want to go to my home folder and my desktop and create a folder there. And we're just going to call it a head, Headshots Create. And as you can see here, we're inside of it now. Select as output folder. Um, and on conflict, I usually leave it as create unique file name. Um, you can say overwrite, but you might accidentally nuke something if you if you um, click export too hastily. So I use it as create unique file name. It'll add a number or something at the end, so you can overwrite it. Um, and then, then if you notice there, it had just a, a, a variable there. It was actually said file name. Um, if you leave that there, where it just, where it just says uh, where it just has a variable file name there, that'll just take the name from the raw file and put it on there. Um, if you rename your raw files, that may be okay. I don't, so it'll just put the uh, DCF or whatever dot JPEG, and I don't want that in a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to give them a unique name. So we're going to say client name. Um, and then we're going to put a variable at the end. Um, and if you do the dollar sign open parentheses, you'll get all these variables that you can use month, day, hour. I'm just going to use the sequence here. What that does is it puts a number at the end. So 0001, 0002, etc. until the last image. Um, and that's what I like to do. Um, when you're delivering files, you're probably going to use JPEG. Um, Darktable can export to any number of formats. Uh, TIFF is a good kind of archival format, which I encourage people to do. Um, you know, uh, your taste change, dark table may not be around forever. Always export a TIFF of your final edit to have, you know, your edit with you with, at all times in a lossless copy. Uh, otherwise, you know, you'll have to be reliant on getting back into dark table and getting your, your edits. And that, that can be problematic. So, uh, but for today, we're just going to do a JPEG export. Uh, I leave it at 100%. And we're going to go down here and look at the scaling stuff. Um, this down here is your uh, width and your height settings. Uh, if you leave it at zero, it will export a full-size JPEG. So if you have a 36 megapixel camera, you'll get a 36 megapixel JPEG. Uh, you know, 20 megapixel, da-da-da. 
um, <clears throat> one for one. But I'm going to go ahead here and slice this down to 3,000 because that's good enough for a lot of web stuff. And uh, <clears throat> easy to share online. These are just going to be using the LinkedIn, UFace, whatever, YouTube, anyway, whatever the kids are doing these days. Um, allow upscaling. Change that to no. Uh, the big one to, to watch here, though, is this profile. By default, it goes to image settings. My camera shoots in Adobe RGB. The internet and a lot of web browsers and um, JPEG format in general does not like Adobe RGB. So I say, <clears throat> I tell it to put the output to sRGB. Um, intent, I just leave that as image settings. Um, if it looks good here, that has to do with color rendering. Uh, if, if it looks good on the screen, roll with it. And style, uh, if you have like a preset style or something you want to use, uh, you can set that here too, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to leave it at none. Um, but now that we have set all of our options here, and again, um, just a quick note here on this, on the size thing, this is analogous to the way I have it set up now to the longest edge setting in Lightroom. Um, if you just did this, it would only scale based on the height. So it wouldn't even look at the, uh, width here. And likewise, putting a zero here tells it to ignore the width too and just scale on the, um, on the height. But um, uh, anyway, sorry, I had to <clears throat> get a little something, a uh, little bit of throat trouble today. But anyway, um, so I just do this so that way it'll scale either width or height depending if the image is portrait or landscape. So now we click the big button and we wait. It's only seven files, it shouldn't take too long. This is an older Mac. It's not the fastest thing on the face of the planet. Um, but right now what it's doing is it's taking your raw file and it's taking your edits that you've made and these are stored in those sidecar files and smashing them together into a final JPEG. Your raw file will stay untouched. Your edits, you can always go back and change your edits later. This is non-permanent, non-destructive. That's the big thing with Darktable, non-permanent, non-destructive. Um, this just takes and makes a JPEG and you can then share that out to the world. All right, 707, looks like it's happy. We're gonna go over here and whoops, that's uh. I was uploading those earlier. Um, here we have the um, all of the uh, all of the uh, pictures we just exported. This is um, uh, all these JPEGs. You can tell they open right up with preview. The normal JPEGs, nothing really spectacular about them. You hit Command. Uh, oop, I meant to hit Command I. Uh, you get the typical EXIF data, title, all that stuff came right along with it. All right, so cool deal. Um, next, I will show you how to upload to Flickr straight from Darktable. Um, so we'll take a quick little break here and we'll come right back into that. Okay, and we are back. And before we exported, uh, I guess I'll go back here and show, we exported the JPEGs. So you can then take these JPEGs and then stick them uh, on Dropbox or, you know, USB drive to deliver them, Google Drive. If you still think it's 2003, you can burn them to a CD and deliver them. Uh, looks like I'm out of space with my time machine drive. Um, but anyway, uh, now those are handy. And, you know, you can upload these to any web service. Flickr, 500px, straight from a web browser. Um, Smug Mug, what have you. But Darktable has some integration with a few web services. Today I'm just going to show you Flickr. So the first thing to do is you come here and your export selected. I've just got one selected right now, one image. Um, change, from change that from file on disk to Flickr web album. And you notice all this stays the same outside of right here under storage options. And it says click login button to start. So the way you do this is you click login um, and it shoots you out to your web browser. I'm already logged into Flickr here. But um, it comes in here and asks you a few questions and gives you a list of things that Darktable will be able to do. You know, I trust Darktable not to screw with my Flickr timeline too much. Um, you may have different opinions and may not trust it with this, but um, whatever. But if you do, you click OK, I'll authorize it. You little happy check mark there. And um, you can close that window. So I will do that and go back to Darktable here. And when you come back here, it'll, you know, it'll say you should have opened your web browser and, and clicked OK and told it it was all right. And you did that. So you click OK here. And now this changes to authenticated. Um, and these boxes here change. Uh, first option is export tags. And that's, you know, this stuff up here, all these tags we've entered. I leave those, yes, because I want, um, 
people to be able to discover the images via searching for some of these tags maybe. Um, you can also change the privacy options. Uh, you've got friends and family, family, friends, everyone. I'm just going to change it to everyone because I want it to be public. And <clears throat> photo sets, I'm going to say without album. If you have an album here that you want to put it in or create a new one, you could do that there, but I'm just going to do it without album. Um, the next thing here, I leave all this the same. Flickr only supports JPEG and ping, so I'm just going to leave it as a JPEG. 100%. I'm going to scale it down a little bit just to make it a size. I just make all my Flickr upload 2,500 pixels. Um, <clears throat> all that stuff can stay the same from, from before for the JPEG settings. And then you click export and this little thing pops up down here in this corner. This is exporting one image of Flickr web album. And dee -dee 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 -dee. we wait a minute. So I talk to Flickr servers. Bits are flying. Things are going. Hard drives are spinning. Flash memory is flashing and writing. Ah, there we go. And we've exported one to the Flickr web album. If we go back here to our photo stream, there it sits, all nice and happy. Uh, there's the image. Uh, there's all the metadata. There's all of our tags. Yeah, we can add it to a group if we want to. Well, it's straight from Dark Table. Very nifty feature if you share your stuff on Flickr. Um, I like it a lot, and uh, I hope you guys uh, make use of it. At any rate, um, I think I'm going to conclude this video here for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and like or subscribe or whatever the terminology is. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down, but let me know what, what I did wrong. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm going to probably do some more of these in the future. Uh, focusing on specific modules and specific things like black and white conversion, maybe even watermarking. <clears throat> I know that's kind of a thing that people like to do. It's not my thing, but some people like it. Um, but at any rate, thanks for watching. And if you have a suggestion for something you would like to see explored in Darktable, leave it in the comments, and I'm, I may or I may try to get to it. But uh, for now, I will see you next time.